Hello everyone, again I welcome you all to my lecture class and my today's class is about vasculitis. Vasculitis as the name suggests means the inflammation of a vessel. So it is the inflammation and damage to blood vessels. In this the vessel lumen is usually compromised leading to ischemia of the tissues supplied. If we talk about etiology, the exact etiology is not yet defined but uh, it may be an interplay between the genetic predisposition, exposure to certain environmental factors and the disturbance in the regulatory mechanisms associated with immune response to certain antigens. If we talk about the types of vasculitis, there are various classifications of vasculitis. Uh, but in this class, I am going to uh, talk about the classification which is based on the size of the vessel involved. So in large vessel vasculitis, we have giant cell arteritis and Takayasus arteritis. In the medium vessel vasculitis, we have polyarteritis nodosa and Kawasaki's disease. In the small vessel vasculitis, we have uh, vasculitis which are again subdivided depending on the presence of autoantibodies. So, NCA associated vasculitis, NCA stands for anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody. Uh, so, this group of vasculitis includes microscopic polyangitis, granulomatous cyst with polyangitis and eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. Immune complex associated small vessel vasculitis. This group consists of IgA vasculitis, HSP, HSP stands for Henoch-Schonlein purpura, cryoglobulinemic vasculitis and anti-glomular basement membrane antibody associated vasculitis. Variable vessel vasculitis includes Bissett's disease and Kogan syndrome. Vasculitis which may be associated with certain systemic diseases like SLE, vasculitis, vasculitis in a patient of rheumatoid arthritis and vasculitis in a patient of sarcoidosis. Vasculitis associated with probable etiology like hepatitis B related vasculitis, hepatitis C related vasculitis, syphilis associated vasculitis and drug induced vasculitis. Single organ vasculitis as the name suggests it means a specific organ is involved in this type of vasculitis. For example, Cutaneous leukocytoclastic angitis or cutaneous arteritis involves the vessels of uh, only the skin. Primary central nervous system vasculitis uh, in which the vessels of only the CNS is involved or isolated aortitis. Okay, now coming to the giant cell arteritis or temporal arteritis. It is a large vessel vasculitis. Sometimes it may uh, affect medium sized vessel also. Specifically, it affects the branches of carotid artery, particularly the temporal artery. Exclusively, it is seen in females and above 50 years of age. If we talk about the pathology, there is pen arteritis with inflammatory mononuclear cell infiltrates. And there is proliferation of the intima and fragmentation of the internal elastic lamina of the vessel wall. Coming to the clinical features, the patient may present with systemic symptoms like a fever, fatigue, malaise, anorexia, headache, weight loss, sweating, arthralgia, polymyalgia, rheumatica. I am coming to it later. Signs like raised temperature, pallor, tenderness in the scalp, claudication of jaw, tongue and arm and ischemic optic neuropathy or sudden onset blindness. So these are very typical features of temporal arteritis. That means in involvement of temporal artery, these specific features will be present like scalp tenderness, jaw pain, or claudication in the tongue or arm and blindness sudden onset blindness patient may present with stroke scalp or tongue infarction or aortic aneurysm 
Now, how do we diagnose such case? Diagnosis is mainly from clinical features, from the typical presentation of a female above 50 years of age. You can think of temporal arthritis, laboratory investigations uh, we can do and we may find anemia or elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Uh, the specific diagnosis can be made from a biopsy of the temporal artery. MRI or CT scan can also be done. If we talk about the treatment, the treatment of choice is corticosteroids that is prednisolone, prednisone or methylprednisolone 40 to 60 milligram per day for one month which to be followed by a gradual tapering. If uh, in case of uh, sudden onset blindness, okay, if we want to protect the remaining vision, then we can start with methylprednisolone 1000 mg daily for 3 days. Okay, as a pulse therapy, we can give methylprednisolone. Weekly methotrexate can also be given. Then anti-tumor necrosis factors or tocilizumab can be used though the benefit is doubtful. Now, a little bit about polymyalgia rheumatica. It is the stiffness, aching and pain in the muscles of the neck, shoulders, lower back, hips and thighs it occurs in isolation in 40 to 50 percent of the patient uh, it occurs in isolation or it may occur in 40 to 50 percent of the patients with giant cell arteritis okay the treatment is again corticosteroids prednisone weekly methotrexate can be given anti tnf agents like infliximab can be used now about takayasu's arteritis it is also a large vessel vasculitis, though it may affect medium-sized arteries also. But typically, it involves aortic arch and its branches. In the pathology, it is again panarteritis with mononuclear cell infiltrate. Clinical features, patient again may present with constitutional symptoms like fever, fatigue, malaise, anorexia, weakness. Okay. But there are certain specific findings, clinical findings from which uh, you can think of Takayasu's arteritis, absent pulse. Okay, On examination, if you are getting pulse in one limb and the other limb you are not getting. Okay, So there is discrepancy in pulses between limbs. Arm claudication. Raynaud's phenomena. We have already discussed what Raynaud's phenomena is. Then visual problem. Syncope, stroke, hypertension, renal failure, aortic insufficiency or regurgitation, congestive heart failure, atypical chest pain or myocardial infarction. So, uh, basically the patient may present with uh, CNS manifestations or cardiac manifestations or even uh, renal manifestations also. Diagnosis is uh, made from, of course, from the clinical features and from the uh, supportive investigations. In the laboratory investigations, there will be again elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate. There may be mild anemia and elevated immunoglobulin levels. Arteriography can, uh, arteriography can show us the irregularity of the vessel wall, stenosis, Postenotic dilatation, aneurysm formation, occlusion, and evidence of increased collateral circulation. In the histopathological examination, again, there will be vessel wall inflammation, granuloma formation, and joint cells involving the media and adventitia of the vessel wall. Again, if we talk about the treatment, it will be corticosteroids, prednisone, Per day elevates the symptom. Surgical and or arterioplastic approach might be needed. Weekly methotrexate can be given and anti-TNF therapies have been encouraging in these cases. Thank you.